Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker with a very, very cool high stakes hand history review played at 200 400. It reminded me of a hand I've seen in the past. I don't know how many of you guys have seen it, but hopefully we get to show it. So, this hand is played between someone whose name I have a hard time pronouncing, who we will call D, and Ivan Galinek. Ivan, I know, is a long time high stakes rag. D I'm not familiar with, but I have seen him around. So decent chance he is too. Two and a half X on the button, standard size, even Galenic calls, and we see a flop of eight, five, three rainbow. One of those boards where even though the in position player misses a lot of the time, his over pairs are worth so much. So nines, tens, jacks, queens, kings are worth so so much due to the board being rainbow and disconnected and low that he actually has a fairly big advantage in terms of the huge amount of hands that want to get stacks in. Even checks and D C bets for 75% size so he's kind of respecting what I just said basically about getting in stacks. He's saying you know I do have lots of hands so I want to size up I don't want to do some third pot or half pot. Now ideally I think GTO would go and ahead and size up even more but it's more important to do something you're familiar with and 75% is a more catch-all sizing to play for various sports. So I think overall good sizing and what should be in your head when you see this is in position is wrapping good eight or better and tons of over pairs and some bluffs and out of position is going to have a hard time defending most of the time. And then, you know, turn high cards are good for in position. Low cards are good for out of position because you can't float very effectively against a big size with high cards. So we make the call. We see a turn queen of diamonds better for the in position player. Even checks. D bets for another. It looks like another 75% pot bet. So he's going with a size that's wide enough where clearly he could go jacks, tens, nines, his good eights. Still, because the queen is kind of a brick as far as the other player is concerned. And again, Ivan's not going to improve a lot, so he has to make some tough calls here, and he does make one. Now, we see the river ace, Ivan checks. D goes into the tank and fires an all-in bet of 3.5x pot. Now, take a second and look at the board, and I'll show you guys which video this reminds me of. I can't call this. Can't you? He's a total maniac, but I've only got a flush draw. You must go deeper. The only thing I beat is another draw. It's a shame you've used up your one time, yeah? How can you hope to beat me when you can't even beat the micros? Don't move until you see it. Wait a second. Don't move until you see it. There are a ton of other draws out there. Let's see. 300,000 divided by $50. I'm gonna need 6,000 titties. What if this isn't the triple range merge? The merge is a lie. What if it's just a shitty desperation bluff disguised as a triple range merge? There is no spoon. What's the matter, luck, boxing? Strike and haunching at your tongue? Say something! Call. What a donkey! You really are the worst player in the world! You're calling me with just a jack high flush draw? Nope. I'm calling you with the best hand. You were right about me being a luck box. Wrong about me not beating the micros. I'm up about 350. Good game. So, why does one hand remind me of the other hand? Look at this board and look at all the busted draws. Do you see 6, 7, 7, 9, 9, 10, jack, and infinite, infinite busted draws? Now, what's your value range is in position on the ace that goes this big? It's not easy to come up with. The big flop bet doesn't always work with sets because sets kind of want your opponent to float. Uh, so you're not going to have tons of pocket 3s, pocket 5s, pocket 8s for this line to begin with. And sure, you can have pocket queens and pocket aces. That's not a lot of combos. And look at all the busted draws. So what does this kind of spot look like in theory? Okay, so 75% flop bet, like I was saying, is a lot of ace, 8, king, 8, 9s, 10s, jacks, queens. And even those sets go in here, aces don't always go in turn was a queen of diamonds for the full rainbow turn. Very good card for in position. You get to barrel this a lot and all of your eights still get to barrel as well as all of your sets and lots of draws and 
when you bet the turn, your opponent still has to call a lot. And one thing you'll see is that he has to call every eight. And this is a common thing in poker. When you don't size huge and your value range includes eight X among other things, then if Ellen holds an eight, he just blocks your value range. So that's kind of worth enough to, to make eights a pure call and, and then worse things will tend to mix. Now, see a call from the out position player will put the ace on the river. One of the worst cards probably for in position, relatively speaking, and when out of position checks, in position does get to fire something like 45% of his range, but he can't fire nines, tens, jacks, kings, apex anymore. At this point, it sets ace, eight, queens, aces, and, and ace, five. If you have that in, in a non all in sizing, you're going to have a solver is going to have some random ace size, a bit humans, not so much. And what you can see is that, you know, there's a lot of stuff that missed and in position has to give up with 10 high, with jack high, with king high, at actually fairly high frequencies. And this is very tough to balance, right? If you look at your range, and one thing we can do in this program is click range explorer. You can see that when in position has nothing, his strategy is to give up 45% of the time. And if we add king high to the nothing, it, it's to give up 55% of the time. So giving up 55% of the time on a card that on the face of it looks scary is kind of tough. And this is why this reminded me of the micros video where it's a scary card and it's a big bet, but look at all the stuff that missed, guys. Look at all the stuff that missed. So... The result of the hand, Ivan Galinek does go into the tank and make the call with 8-7 offsuit, but unfortunately for him, he runs into the ace-8 of his opponent who revered two pair and went for the max value. So even though all the stuff missed, D just had it this time. And we can certainly understand why this call was made. I think that's not surprising at all. And in terms of theory, should the call have been made? The answer is, well, you know, sometimes it's such a big bet. And this is a kind of line where there is no way around the fact that you have to sometimes call hands that only beat a bluff. If you have an eight, you block ace eight, you block pocket eights. So fair enough, you have some relevant removal effects. That's good enough to sometimes call. And yeah, I think very, very cool hand. I enjoyed seeing it a lot. Hopefully I managed to illuminate part of the thought process of even in this hand where, you know, maybe he was randomizing, but there's also a lot going on that makes this a very attractive calling spot. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys next time.